You are still on to Daybreak, and it's the segment uh, that we have to interview a particular guest. Uh, and today we have a guest uh, all the way from Belgium, uh, a councillor who is also a foreign uh, policy commentator, Colin Sinweke. He's a Nigerian. And today we'll be looking at the Niger coup, assessing uh, the ECOWAS intervention plan. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, George. How are you doing? It's a pleasure having you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be with you. Uh, Thank you for yeah. having me. Well, sir, um, uh, everybody is talking about uh, this uh, Niger coup at the moment and uh, uh, the ECOWAS uh, intervention plan, you know, they have uh, uh, to kill the crisis, uh, to bring it down and to restore back the former administration. Uh, so from your own point of view, you know, uh, do you see that plan? You know, is it is it a fruitful plan? Is it a plan that is good enough uh, for an African country that is uh, going through a lot of economic crisis and a lot of uh, political crisis at the moment? Is force the way out? Well, um, you are dealing with um, uh, military boys. Uh, who have decided to uh, end uh, a democratic process and in its place uh, install a military regime. I believe that, um, you know, when dealing with such people, you don't mince words about condemning what they have done. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there shouldn't be any room for, um, you know, sentiments and emotion. Now, the sentiment and emotion that have to be uh, ruled out here is the fact that um, there couldn't be anything better than uh, mediation than diplomacy. Uh, military uh, force, military intervention uh, cannot be ruled out uh, either. However, it has got to be seen as the last resort. Now, something tells me that the ECOWAS uh, leadership um, have decided that it is important to um, actually emphasize the, war, the fact that um, military options remain an option. However, that diplomacy will be what they need to uh, deploy in the first instance and continue to explore uh, solutions from the diplomatic uh, angle while letting the uh, military forces, uh, the military uh, regime uh, that has incrementally been installing themselves after toppling the um, you know, civilian uh, government, that um, military force can come in. However, they continue to explore the um, you know, uh, diplomatic uh, solution and political solution, of course. Um, okay, so um, you know this um, um, Nijeku is giving um, some Nigerians cause to worry as in um, it's a neighboring country to um, Nigeria and um, though it has affected um, people at the border, their relationship and all that. So what's the domestic impl impl implication of this coup on Nigeria? What's Nigeria's involvement? What do you think is Nigeria's involvement in all of this? Well, Nigeria remains a part of uh, ECOWAS and uh, the, um, the presidency of uh, Bola Ahmed uh, Tinupu uh, has found it uh, very important to uh, let Nigerians know that uh, Nigeria as a country is not taking a position of its own that they are going by the consensus um, you know, position of ECOWAS as a block, as an economic uh, block, economic community of West African uh, states. So this shouldn't be, uh, this shouldn't be seen, uh, according to uh, the presidency of Nigeria, uh, this shouldn't be seen as uh, a battle between Nigeria as a country and Niger, as uh, another country. Both of them belong to ECOWAS. Now, that said and that clarified, um, I believe that there are seven countries, sorry, seven, seven states of Nigeria that shares border with, uh, you know, Niger Republic. Mm. That is significant. As a matter of fact, it is even being said that uh, the situation is so intertwined that some Nigerians and some uh, Nigerians actually have their sitting room 
in one of the two countries and some of their bedrooms in the other country. That is the extent to which, you know, they are interwoven. Now, uh, we also know of the menace of, um, you know, uh, Boko Haram, ISWAP, and other terrorist uh, groups that have activities, uh, you know, in those uh, regions. So, uh, uh, quite apart from the economic, um, you know, the economic uh, relations between Nigeria and Niger, also cultural relations, religion, and all of that, there is also the security uh, concern. And so, those who sue for you know, diplomatic uh, solution rather than military uh, solution actually are very much uh, determined to do that, also considering the, um, you know, security concern. Okay, so the, you have the security concern uh, of Nigeria going in there, but also the uh, economic uh, concern. Those are the two major ones that uh, bother those who do not want to see military intervention. Now, uh I want us to look at uh, democracy. Um, if you look at it critically, you'll find out that uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, you know, uh, both countries uh, have been overtaken uh, by military coup. So now followed by Niger. And uh, there seems to be this, um, you know, rise in Africa, especially in West Africa, of, um, you know, anti-democracy, you know, um, movement uh, by the military and uh, so many. And people are beginning to feel, oh, maybe we are not even good for democracy at all. So um, let's look at that very well. Do you think, um, you know, the, the West, you know, that's uh, Europe and um, America, have too much influence on Africa, West Africa, that um, they are not able to plan their own, you know, economies, their own uh, political grounds or whatever, because it seems we are still feeding from the West. Uh, do you think all these things can actually lead to more coups or, or whatever, uh, or more disturbances in any polity across uh, the West African region or Africa itself? Um, I think that we need to assess the reasons that coup plotters actually advance as justification for uh, seizing power through the barrel of the gun. Mm. Now, the major reason that uh, they always advance is the fact that uh, democracy has not uh, yielded the uh, expected uh, result in Africa. So in other words, uh, poverty is rife. Now, when uh, African, uh, you know, citizens of the African countries where coup uh, have uh, taken place uh, actually jubilate and appear to be welcoming the uh, military seizure of uh, power, they do that not because they detest uh, democracy, no. What they detest is the deplorable, um, you know, quality of life that they have, that they have been forced to live under. So, anybody who comes up, and it could be anybody from hell, that comes forward and says to them, you know what, you are better than what you have been given so far, and I am the Messiah, that will bring you the good life that has, um, in, uh, you know, eluded you for so long, well, they embrace such people, not necessarily because they, uh, you know, prefer military uh, government over uh, democratic uh, regime, but simply because, um, you know, they are desperate for the good life that has uh, eluded them. So, I believe that the priority, the major priority here is to get our system of government, governance, uh, to get it right. And yes, okay, uh, the meddling hands of the West has always been there. And you see, I think we need, Africa needs to depart from that mindset that the West is in Africa to help Africa. That is oh. far from the case. The case is that the West is in Africa simply for their own interest. And Africa's interest actually comes next to theirs. And so the moment Africans begin to look out for their own interest and determine which of these Western countries, uh, you know, they want to ally with in view of 
the competitive advantage that they bring to the table, the better for Africa. And so forget all about, uh, you know, the West, you know, France, for instance, uh, talking about, uh, you know, Francophone uh, Africa. Uh, the West uh, is not there because they love Africa, they want to help Africa. No, they are there to protect their own economic and political interests, and Africa should begin to look out for their own economic and political interests as well. Okay, um, I want to ask you, because since we are all saying uh, military intervention should be the last option, should be the last resort, and then um, the junta are also saying if the military intervenes, that they are going to kill the uh, ousted president, that's Mohamed Bazoum and all that. What do you think is um, are other diplomatic um, ways to, uh, options, diplomatic options rather, that can be used um, in this situation what can what, what can be done in to remedy um, in this situation just to prevent the military intervention well the ideal situation is uh, actually to um, you know bring back uh, democracy okay uh, which means uh, restoration uh, of uh, democratic rule by um, you know restoring uh, mohammed bazoum as the president of um, you know Niger Republic. That is the ideal situation. Uh, but by the day, it is looking unlikely. Now, what is the alternative? The alternative is actually the, uh, the status quo that we have always seen when there is military takeover of uh, power, which is, okay, let us uh, negotiate, um, you know, a transitional uh, government, an entering government that will be in place while we, you know, try to iron out uh, the way uh, forward. Now, as far-fetched and as unpalatable as it looks, um, that happens to be perhaps uh, the most uh, feasible, I'm not saying sensible, but the most feasible option that is, uh, you know, facing, that is staring everyone in the face. So I believe that the attempts with you know, uh, threats and automatum and all of that hasn't worked. Um, sending uh, emissaries, um, you know, uh, delegates to them, high-ranking uh, delegates, the likes of Abu um, Salem of uh, Nigeria, hasn't worked. Even the uh, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State, Nolan, uh, was there, and, uh, you know, the military junta uh, just wouldn't see her. So you see, all of those have failed. Now, I think they need to rejig the whole situation and begin to consider sending lower ranking uh, officers. These are classmates, eh? Nigerian, um, you know, uh, people, graduates of the Nigerian Defense Academy. They were in class with, um, you know, these uh, military junctors. Well, they speak the same language on first term uh, basis. They should send them because they probably trust them better than these, uh, you know, big weeks. Um, you know, let them get talking with them. And you also have to recognize that there are, you know, so many stakeholders in this. The Wagner uh, group, uh, the military contractors uh, of uh, Russia, they are there. Russia as a country, as a government, is also having their own, um, you know, uh, say there. So they should spread it and begin to negotiate with all the different uh, stakeholders. It's not going to be an overnight uh, Negotiation, diplomatic uh, channel requires, um, you know, uh, back channels, requires uh, patience and needs time to, um, you know, uh, to hold. So they should continue to explore all of those uh, alternative options. Now, uh, uh, that, that's fine. Uh, let's look at uh, ECOWAS itself. Uh, ECOWAS is uh, like the organization, the economic uh, you know, of uh, West African uh, states, uh, you know, and it's meant to actually help uh, develop uh, the various uh, African countries. Uh, but you did mention that, uh, you know, uh, the people were not uh, crying or for the military takeover, you know, were not uh, happy with the military takeover, but uh, the deplorable you know, state of the, of the country. And uh, this cuts across every other African country there. 
West Africa, for you know, you know, for an example, you know, has a lot of uh, you know, lot of anomalies. Uh, the leadership is quite poor. So uh, right now, if ECOWAS is uh, fighting to return back a government that uh, has uh, put its people under a deplorable state. Uh, for example, okay, we all know that uh, Niger produces, you know, for a very long time, I didn't even know that. I just found out uh, during this school that Niger produces a high level of uh, uranium and uh, uh, they are about sixth largest in the world or seventh largest in the world, but the second most poorest na nation in the whole world. And that is a very wide gap and it shouldn't be like that. So uh, is ECOWAS right? bringing up you know suggestions of trying to s stop or bring back the former administration or trying to su or are they supposed to suggest a way out of the whole issue of uh, not uh, not developing the states at all yeah um there are um, we do, there, i mean there's enough blame to go around here mm -hmm. i mean in terms of um where uh, and why Africa is in the deplorable uh, situation that it is today. But um, ultimately, uh, the entire blame rests with those who have managed African affairs in terms of the African uh, leadership uh, up until this point. Now, we do know also that there are very fundamental structural issues or challenges. Uh, for instance, uh, the way uh, the um, international uh, organizations are, you know, uh, constructed. They are constructed in a manner that tilts against, uh, you know, African countries in terms of um, uh, tariffs, uh, in terms of uh, trade uh, agreements and, uh, you know, trade uh, treaties rather, uh, and all of that. Um, we have, what we are seeing now is a world gravitating towards a rigid of, um, you know, the, uh, the world order. There is a new world order in the making. Mm. And uh, it is important that in this new world order, Africa has got to um, reassess its position and do, you know, a competitive uh, advantage analysis to determine which of these countries? I'm not saying that the authoritarian countries, for instance, uh, Russia, uh, China, and all of that, that have been uh, reaching out uh, a hand of uh, camaraderie to West Africa, that Africa should, uh, you know, uh, look the other way. Certainly not. Africa uh, has room for everyone. Those who profess to be the most democratic countries of the world, United States, uh, European Union, and so on and so forth, well, that's fine. They are welcome as uh, partners of Africa, but also the uh, despondent uh, countries, you know, the more authoritarian, authoritarian ones like uh, Russia, China, and all of that, and to a lesser extent, uh, Turkey, that has uh, also been making inroads lately into Africa, I believe that uh, Africa should have a system that accommodates them on the basis of what they bring to the table that is of strategic advantage to, uh, to Africa. So it's going to be a mixed bag of the good, the bad, and the ugly, but uppermost in all of these should be Africa's best uh, interest. Now, they shouldn't be listening to uh, the United States of America when it says, don't deal with uh, China, deal only with us. They shouldn't be listening to, um, you know, the European Union when the European Union says, listen, um, uh, Putin, uh, Russia under Putin is uh, the adversary of uh, the United, uh, sorry, the uh, un um, EU, the European Union. So for that reason, don't deal with them. No, they shouldn't listen to that they should look at what china is sorry what uh, russia is bringing to the table as long as it is of benefit to uh, africa they will have to fashion out a way of working with them while maintaining their friendship uh, with the european uh, union until that begins to happen which is the rejig of this new world order uh, i believe that africa will continue to be exploited by these powers, be it the United States, be it Russia, 
be it France or the European Union. Thank you so much uh, for your time, uh, Colin Simweke there. Uh, Thank you so he, much, sir, He's for your time. Uh, a foreign uh, um, uh, political uh, commentator all the way from Belgium. Thank you so much for your time, sir. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. All the conversation. Cheers. Thank you. And with that, uh, that's a wrap up on the interview segment. Uh, on the daybreak, uh, well, daybreak continues. We'll go for a very short break and we'll be right back. <laughs>